What's up everybody, I'm the Mangus, you are awesome, and today we're going to take a close, detailed look at how Lieutenant Bellica has been implemented across Predecessor, Overprime, and Fault. By the way, in Overprime, she's known as Valora, certainly one of their better names. We'll take a look at her animations and visual effects, listen to her sound effects, and discuss her abilities' ease of use. I'm bringing back the star ratings for this one, y'all seem to enjoy that. What I'll not factor in when comparing Belly is her overall damage output. Uh, that's a balanced thing and can be corrected when the games are in a more finished state. Please like the video if you enjoy these and consider subscribing for more. Now let's get into it with her basic attack. In Predecessor, Bellica's basics are a three round burst that creates a single instance of damage. The sound effect is well done with a distinct triple pop when firing and a chunky pop when hit. You get a flash on hit and a puff of smoke at max range when you miss. A little easier to see on the enemy Bellica. She ejects three shells each time she auto attacks, however you only see one projectile exit her weapon. Overprime also has a distinct triple pop when she fires with one single whack on hit. She ejects three empty cartridges when she fires and you also get multiple projectiles from the muzzle. There's a flash on hit and a puff of smoke when you miss. Fault has one report when you fire and one whack when the projectile hits. Fire. No sound if you miss. Although you only have the sound effect for one shot, you still get three empties ejected from the port. You get a flash on hit and a fragmented projectile on a miss. All three studios did a pretty good job with Bellica's basic attack, but I think Overprime's Valora just slightly edges out the other two with the addition of multiple projectiles for her, uh, for her visual effects. Lieutenant Bellica's traditional Q ability is Seismic Assault. You send out a line of damage that knocks enemies up. All three games have kept this ability. This was very easy to target in Predecessor, however, they lacked cast settings in the alpha test, which uh, it made this a bit harder for me personally to use since I prefer quick cast on our queue. The sound effect is a little bit of bellica grunting followed by a kind of hollow explosion. Visually, she pulls out a halo sword and punches the ground, causing a rolling cloud of blue to billow out from the point of impact, leaving small patches of broken terrain in its wake. The type of broken terrain is dependent on where you slam. You also leave the sword stuck in the ground. Her Q was also easy to use in Overprime and was auto set to quick cast. I would still like to see more cast settings for other players, but uh, it was nice for me to have it set to quick cast. The sound effect is some voiceover from Belka followed by a, cr a big crunchy smash. The animation is still the ground punch with the halo sword. Visually, you get a primary eruption at the base of the attack that sets off a series of smaller circular explosions radiating toward the end of the reticle. This leaves cracked rocks on the ground along with some broken shards flying upwards. Fault slam is easy to target and especially nice when firing through walls. The sound effect includes an electronic wind up sound followed by a series of explosions that Doppler out as they move away. Visually, she halo swords the ground and there are rolling blue explosions moving away from the initial impact. This leaves nothing behind to show it was ever there. I'm very torn on this one. Fault has the best sound effects, yet the worst visual effects. Pred has pretty monotone sound effect, but great visuals with terrain dependent after images. Overprime has solid sound and visual effects, but not so great that they trump the other two in those respective categories. Uh, they just, they all get a four. Melka's E in Baragon was Void Drone. You drop your little buddy into sap mana from targets while zapping them if they use abilities. Not much changed for Predecessor. You call it in, it sucks mana, and zaps people. The Pred version has pips for its health and needs to be hit four times to break it. Sound effects are a faint electronic noise. You get a transparent version of the drone as your center targeting reticle. There's a beam of light upon activation and the drone phases in from above with its wings extended upwards and then they kind of fold down and pop back into place as the drone sort of bobs in. Overprime's drone is also very similar to Paragon's but it has its own health bar instead of pips. 
Sound effects are some electronic sounds when you start to target it, and then some electronic sounds as it phases in. Targeting reticle is a transparent drone at the center. The drone phases in and spins slightly into place. Once the drone is down, there's a visible link to the targets letting you know that they are being drained. Vault went with a different route for the drone. Their drone doesn't drain mana, only zaps people when they use abilities, but it's completely untargetable. You also have a separate drone above your shoulder that's part of her passive, which we'll address later. Sound effect is a very faint electronic buzz as it comes online. You only get the wide area targeting reticle and the drone simply appears in place amidst the blue flash. This was another tough one. Pred did a really good job with the placement animation for the drone. However, I really like how Overprime's drone has a visual link to the target. It doesn't really do anything, but it makes me feel like I'm doing something. Giving this the Overprime. Velika's big boy move is her right click, Void Bomb. You put down a bomb that spins up for a second before exploding. All three companies have kept the Void Bomb functionally the same. Targeting for Pred's Void Bomb was very intuitive. Sound effects are an electronic hum into a nice explosion. I had to slow this way down to really see what was going on with the effects. I think the bomb is spinning, but all you see is like a blue haze with concentric light circles rolling from top to bottom. The explosion is really impressive with a blue shockwave traveling out first, followed by the actual billow of fire and debris. Overprime's Void Bomb suffered from the same problem as all of their targeted AoE abilities. The reticle would act strange around ledges. There isn't much of a sound effect pre-explosion, but the explosion itself sounds really good. They have the same blur of blue with light rings coming down. The explosion itself is a pretty standard fireball, however you do see pieces of the actual bomb flying away, which is which it's a nice touch. Targeting for false void bomb is pretty good, however the reticle can get hung up on stairs or, or on destroyed towers. Sound effect is a bit of electronic hiss into the kaboom. This. Visually, they also have the blue blur with the light rings. There's an initial shock wave into the explosion with visible chunks of the drone flying away. They all did a pretty good job with the Void Bomb, but I'm gonna have to give this one to Pred because the, the targeting was just easier and that's kind of the most important part, right? Bellica's ultimate is Neural Disruptor. She pulls out a pistol and caps people, dealing more damage the less mana they have. All three games have kept this the same. Predecessor's ultimate was pretty easy to use, but I had a few instances of it not doing damage, which it, that kind of sucked. You get a sharp click immediately followed by a boom for the shot. There's muzzle flash from the barrel, a flash upon hit, and a smoke trail leading towards the target. Overprimes is fairly similar, however, it's more of a loud explosion on the shot. You get a lot of flash from the shot, flash on hit, and concentric sonic boom circles leading toward the target. In fault, you get a very slight cocking sound as she pulls the pistol out, followed by the big boom. An enemy has been slain. There's muzzle flash and flash on hit. There's smoke like there is in Pred but it trails off to the side of Belica as if it came out of the ejection port. Giving this one to Overprime since uh, a few people and I experienced some bugs with this one in Pred and Fault, it, it just has the smoke going the wrong way, which irks me. A basic movement. While Omeda didn't seem to have touched up Grux's movement animations yet, Belica seems to be ready to go. Great inertia, footsteps match terrain, just all around great. Overprime didn't do a bad job with her, but uh, I mean, she has her old travel mode animation. I actually, I actually don't remember her travel mode in Old School Paragon. I didn't really fuck with Velka that much back then, but her animations are okay in Overprime, just not as good as Pred's. Fault has pretty good movement, but once again, her footsteps don't match her actions. She she maintains the same run no matter what, if she's going up or down or left or right or whatever. It, it causes a, bit, a little bit of a mental disconnect. Uh, Predecessor is the very clear winner here. Now for passives, Overprime doesn't got one, but Pred and Fault do. 
In Predecessor, your abilities get stronger when they're max level, and Bellica gets extra mana once all of her abilities are maxed out. In Fault, her drone follows her and fires on her target, giving her basic some extra ability damage. Fault's passive is pretty basic, but kinda cool. Pred's passive is more in-depth, but I dislike how she's the only hero besides Sevrog that she has to wait for her passive to be useful. Uh, giving this passive default. Not doing skins for Belka as no one made more than a recolor for her. Uh, Fault and Overprime did include an unreleased epic skin that was a pre-built asset. I'm only counting the skins if the studio themselves created their own like tier 4, not a recolor, original skin. And that wraps it up for Bellica. Not a hero I really messed with in Paragon, but one that I've really enjoyed playing in all three remakes. Um, that's pretty much the case for all the mid laners, with the exception of the Fae and, and maybe Gadget. I'll start digging through my files to figure out who I'm going to knock out next and hit some friends up for some ADC footage. If you want to watch some of the old Honest Hero overviews, I'll have the playlist linked at the end. But for now, this is the Mangoose signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoose! Special shout out to channel members, iBloodHunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Raven, and Blastoise King.